there's always a few mallards that try to get in 15 minutes before legal light, always. It should be a good hunt, you know, I mean, look at those ducks. Boom, <laughs> now that makes me happy right there. Right here, right here. Go, 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 go. Those ones did it, mate. All right, okay, so I'm gonna pass around a waiver. How old are you? Okay, we'll get your dad to sign this one. And then there's we're filming a television show yeah. called Hired to Hunt. Love it. How cool is that? That's cool. So if you if you if you're okay with being potentially on it, you have to sign this talent release form. Talent? And no, I'm not talent? calling your agent. And no, you're not that talented. So it's, just a, <laughs> it's a term we use. Okay? How much money do we get? It's a term of endearment. <laughs> That's why you sign this, so we don't give you any money. Go, 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 go! Ammo? You guys have ammo? No. You never, didn't get the memo? Mm -hmm. no, no, we, we didn't get the memo. <laughs> ammo. Yeah, the memo. Yeah. Well, you guys can't buy ammo in Canada anyways. Yeah. So yes, I have ammo. Okay. I'll go get ammo right now. I'll go bring Yeah, we're going to shoot stuff. Okay, good. White stuff, gray stuff, black and gray stuff. Green stuff. Green stuff. Come get your ammo, guys. Warning all your dogs. Thank you, thank you. Today was interesting. Again. So today, these sprinkles that we're supposed to have ended up being five or six, seven hours of solid rain again. Definitely a dog show. You don't see a dog show? This afternoon will be a dog. <laughs> Is that five or six? Yeah, I yeah. A tough one in the sense of the birds just wouldn't uh, wouldn't do it, but we made enough changes, we got them. So. There are times when we have to sit groups out on an afternoon, and, and usually it's when we get caught with our pants down, so to speak. If we're duck hunting in the morning, we shoot all of our ducks, and then it either starts to rain or was raining, the geese will go out and they'll spend the entire day out in the field and not go back to roost. If they don't go back to roost, there's no opportunity for us to get into the field, set up our decoy spread and anticipate their return, which is when we would hunt them. So I'll go, I'll go ask these guys what they want to do. All right. So they wiped out the front of my house up, Doc. He said, and then it came back from the other side. Like this afternoon, I, it, like for killing geese is a write-off. Like we, we just won't get it. I can guarantee you that. If we go in, we screw up opportunity that potentially works for tomorrow. We just need to know what kind of direction you give us. That just so, and then we'll come back and we'll lay the cards on the table and go, this is what we think we should do. We're gonna go spotting right away because these birds, by 4:30 today, five o'clock, it's pretty much done. They'll be going back to roost. I think half of our group, if we're gonna do the same groups, wants to shoot ducks, and half of them want to shoot geese. So okay, I'm wide open. And when we go spotting, right? right like yeah, I mean, yeah. we could put a man spending six hours watching these Canada geese if that's what you want, and really interpreting that and what's going on there. Canadians or Canada's? Yeah, there's a bunch of Canadians are easy. They're just driving down the hallway, just kind of, they're standing in the mall. Yeah, but they're all smart asses. There's, there's, there's a few. There's, there's a bunch in the There's a bunch in the local bar. Yeah, you shoot Canadians are easy. Time. Well, you know what? Everybody would like to go on a super on a combo hunt. But of course, you don't have it. of course, it's so right. We're, we're easy like that. You know what I would say is like we're taking a duck hunt because we'll kill eighty ducks. You want trigger time. That that's not a bad idea. You know, you know what I mean? I mean if it's we're fine. I mean if there's a bunch of ducks mixed in with geese, then you're gonna kill eighty ducks and you might kill twenty geese, you might kill two. That's cool too, right? There we have it. Yeah. Alright, well done. I just drove by it, checking some ducks at another spot. I look over my right shoulder, it's just off the highway, and on this hill there's four hundred big candidates. Well, I called the landowner, didn't get her, I just wheeled into her yard. <clears throat> She was there, she was actually backing out of her, out of her driveway and that's why I didn't get her on her, on her home phone. And it, it was one of those deals where they're roosting close and I wanted to make sure those Canada geese were well imprinted on the feed. So I knew it wasn't an option right away for, for the Monday morning. And then um, Ryan was gonna hunt it on Tuesday morning. At that point, what I would've done is said, 
this one's no good, it's a bust, gone to Jerry's, which was another target, and got the information. So they were there, you just didn't see them leave because you yeah. chased stuff. So it was, it was just a time management issue. It, it, I mean, and it was, you were doing for the right reasons, but in that situation where we're, we're back, it was just a, the wrong, in that situation, the wrong decision, you know? Just because chances are, we would have hunted them anyways, knowing it was the one feeding, if you even would have got permission, right? But what you lost was that important bit of 20 minutes of information on Jerry's there, where you didn't see him leave. And here's some. And if you'd have seen him leave, you probably would have hunted it, and you'd have killed him in there this morning. If you pull the pin on a, on a target, move to an alternate, but, but play it. Like, don't worry about the birds that we don't... Like, if they're not doing it for us, you can't make it happen. Wherever they went didn't matter at that point. Yeah, like, they just, they pulled themselves out of play, and that's fine. How was that hunt this morning, Dustin? About 30 birds. Same as last night, eh? Well, that's about what there was last night. That evening, they went and they did something else. So the pattern was a little bit disrupted, and then... I watched it again. Uh, Tuesday they were in there all day and that's the day that we had to sit the hunters out because of the rain and it actually got bigger and a bunch of ducks showed up. And of course that was starting to make me very happy and we had a northwest wind so of course you had some migrators. That hunt just set itself up perfectly where we had the ducks hitting the pothole. There was a little gap in the cattails where the the, the ducks would actually walk through and feed on the top of the side hill. The geese were feeding on the same hill. It was just, it was set up perfectly for the next day. I mean, you couldn't have painted a better picture. Now, of course, talking about the wind, I did lose some sleep that night. The wind was supposed to blow out of the northwest, and I checked it, and I actually woke up a couple of times during the night, and I checked the wind. I mean, I get up, I listen for it, I go check the wind sock, and I go, okay, I can go back to sleep. A few hours later, I wake up, I checked it again, and of course when I got up for the morning, I knew, I knew then, it was gonna be a good hunt. We'd rather be hunting than spotting, there's no doubt about it, you know, I mean, it's uh, a lab is bred to retrieve ducks, we're bred to guide and kill ducks, you know, and uh, uh, spotting is, uh, is one of those unnecessary evils that you have to do that to get you out out in the field, you know, so you can hunt, so. Oh yeah, there they are. There's the ducks, there's the geese. Oh yeah, baby, it is loaded. They cross the highway, set their wings, and in they go. Wow, this is looking good. So, the pond is all stacked up. You can see the pothole there. There's geese behind it, and then there's geese up on the hill, and that's kind of where they've been feeding. So it's just a matter of playing the wind tomorrow morning. Make sure these things are settled nicely. It's not a huge duck hunt. Like every hunt, I mean, I, I've, I've made the analogy, it's like a ripe fruit and you gotta pick it, which is true. So now this one we think is ready, but um, it's almost like a canvas, and, and they're the artist, and they gotta paint the picture, and then it's our job to interpret what we see and, and define the hunt for tomorrow morning and see what we need for equipment and to set it up. So right now, the way I see this is they're feeding close enough to that side hill where we can use the boxes, which gives us great concealment. Oops, this is one of the guides. Hi, Jeff. Good, man. And if you've got a real good one, let us know. Last night, there was about 20 geese in there and didn't really pay too much attention. Now driving by today, there's a big Patch of mallards in there. Oh wow. Um yeah. Well if it's rocking, I would I would say I would say get it. You know? Well yeah, if they go in, I'd say I'd say hunt it. That'll right now that seems to be the best best option for trigger time if you got that many ducks. I mean if you kill 40 ducks and well, let's do it. Let's do it. Pull the trigger. Alright, we're talking to you. Huh? Jeff's working on another one he just found on uh, on some swaths, so pretty good chance the lander will let us in there, and we'll do that one tomorrow, and then this one if it sticks, and away we go. I've hunted them this way a lot, where um, 
we'll use the edge of the cover and we'll use, especially with this wind, we'll shoot the ducks over the water and we'll catch the geese just drifting over us, right over the blind, because they're just going to approach over the water. And we'll have the decoys, the goose decoys behind us. And it'll be, it'll be pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> this is a good hunt. Very, very good hunt. Wow, there's a lot of geese in there. I may have to do a double spank. This could be interesting. This could be very interesting. Um, we call it a double spank, and what that is, and I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do this or not. I'll make a decision uh, based on the terrain, but when the ducks puddle, they'll hit the water first. Okay, so if I'm set up in a field rig 100 yards away, what's going to happen is the, the, we're sitting there in the goose rig, the ducks will puddle on the water. You could have five, six, seven hundred ducks on the water, and then you fire that first cap and you just spook them up. So you, in essence, need to hunt the water for the ducks for that first 30 minutes before the geese fly, and then you run into the goose rig and you, you hunt the goose rig. So it's, it's almost like two hunts in one. It's a puddle shoot and a goose hunt in the field at the same time. But if we can avoid that and use the cover and have the, the geese drift over us, that would be the most suitable way to hunt this. So, I don't know, we're gonna have to, uh, I'll play it by ear and I'll see what happens. Cause if I blow this, it's uh, you blow a good opportunity on a great hunt. We don't wanna do that. So I'll make a decision here in about 20 minutes when I get in there. Go time. All right, they're starting to go. Some of the birds are going right in the, to roost right in that, uh, in one of the puddles in the field, but they, they won't stay there. Cause as soon as I go in, to, determine the location, they'll just fly out of there, they'll go somewhere else. And as long as we can get them a mile away, that's fine. But there's uh, there's probably 20 or 30 puddles within the within this mile, so it's gonna be, it'll be interesting. This is the witching hour. There goes some more. Am I nervous? You bet I'm nervous. Oh, okay. oh they want in there bad. Oh well. I hope they don't go back in there. Okay, time to figure this one out. Put the pin in the ground. So it's time for a little walk here. It's starting to get dark now, but when I was watching this, this bay, I could see the ducks actually, rather than flying out to feed, I could see them walking out to feed. So they, they create little duck trails. It's really cute. Uh, you don't see that in very many other places in North America. But anyways, um, so now I know that this is where the ducks were feeding on the side hill. And the majority of the geese were right here as well. You know what I think I'm going to do? Is I'm going to get in those boxes and load the top of the hill with a bunch of Bigfoot decoys and let the cards fall where they may. And I think we're going to do very well. The key in this situation really is, is the concealment factor. Like if we're out there even in, in any lay down blinds or in the big bush, I mean there's, yeah they do it, but I can get the boxes right into the foxtails there. We'll absolutely vanish. I'll put 70 or 80 Bigfoots right on the top hill. We have wind out of the northwest, so the sun's gonna come out of, out of the east. Those decoys will be front lit. It's gonna look so natural, it'll be awesome. And then the ducks will all, all puddle right into the decoys and with a robo duck and look out, should be good. Should be really good. There's, there's a bunch of geese feeding on, on this hill and the ducks and the geese were kind of all up in here, all the way up to that far hill. The way the wind is, is nice. ooh, perfect still. So what I want is, if you look down there, see that little gap and there's cattails there and there's cattails there? Uh -huh. That's where we're gonna dress the blind. So do not, do not squish that area right there. Just okay. slide them in from the back? Yeah, we'll slide them in from the back. So we'll pull them out. I'll put them right there and then and we'll get a couple guys to dress them. Okay, and then what I can, the way I'm gonna set this up is the the Bigfoot decoys are gonna go up, up here on this hill. Okay. And that'll keep the geese just on track, hopefully gliding right over us. We're gonna be in the boxes. Whose box is this gonna be? Who's this right here? We just need this fluffed up a little bit. I'll put out a bunch of duck decoys in the water. And then the fully flocked decoys on stakes, we're going to put on the beach and as far as we can get them into the water. 
right out in front, right? So we'll just everything will just keep on track in this in this line of wind. Cool? Got a couple mojos out here. We're styling. Test this remote right now. And we are good to go. I like it. Just, we're set up perfectly. We're simulating exactly what went on yesterday. The geese feeding on the hill behind us with the ducks. The big part of the pond back there, which really is out of play today, they just ig almost ignored it. This bay, you can see all the slack water, which is perfect. I mean, it should just be, it should be a good hunt, you know, I mean, look at those ducks. Boom, right side. Hold, hold. Go, 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 go. started banging away at the ducks. I mean, they were doing it perfectly right, like in the hole. And, and it's important for us to get them in the hole. They're gonna hover right over us, boys. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Go, 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 kill those, kill those. That wasn't pretty. <laughs> Go, 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 go! Go, 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 go! Here we go, guys. Hold tight, hold tight. We got a whole bunch of. <laughs> Ready? Go, 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 go! So it's, it's fair shooting for the hunter who's on the far left or the far right and everybody in the middle. And that's critical. That's our job to set it up that way. I knew they wanted it. Wow. Oh my God. When they come around behind us, I went, he's, he's sick, he's sick, he's sick. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go! I, I love when they do it over water. <laughs> then as it unfolded, you know, my confidence grew and, and the pressure comes off. Oh, Ricky, ready to kill that one! Go, 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 go! Go, 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 go! That's what I like to see. And, you know, we had ducks coming in, we had geese doing it, geese doing it right. I mean, there it was perfect. Your pressure just goes. <sighs> Great day. Ah, uh, well, losing that little bit of sleep. Eh, worked out very well. Ended up with uh, all our ducks, so they shot 40 ducks and about 32 geese, I believe. So, it's really good. Great morning. It, it could have been better. I mean, and I've I've done this a lot of times, man. I've done it a lot of hunts. And it was not only a good hunt, but it was pretty. And it just, it worked perfectly. And you know, we, we kill our ducks every day. It's not always pretty, but this was perfect. This morning, the wind stayed. That little spot that we, uh, that we picked yesterday was just bang on. You know, we were watching the hunt from the other end of the pond and we could see them flying out into the wind, feeding right up on this hill and their approach and everything they did was pretty much exactly to what we saw yesterday. So it worked. What do you say, guys? Fantastic. Hey, Fantastic. thanks. That was awesome. Right on, man. Good job, Nick. Oh. Thank you. Well, that was a good one. It's a long one. It was a good one. <laughs>
40 ducks, 31 geese, I think. That's a pile of hulls. Oh, I'm tired now, though. I didn't know that I'd get all the geese, but, um, you know, as, as you start clicking off those ducks and it goes from 17 to 20 to 23, and then in your head you got 10, 12, 14 geese, the stress goes away, you know, and then you're at 38, 39, 40 ducks are done, no more pressure there, the rest is bonus. And, you know, it ended up 31 geese, 40 ducks. I mean, it, it, it could have been better. I felt good when I got there. I mean, you know, I, I drove up to the pin, shone my big light, the wind was perfect, the water was slack, right, right perfectly in front of, you know, between the two clumps of cattails where we're gonna set up the box blinds. And I mean, I just, you know, I don't, I don't like to jinx myself and I don't like to, you know, paint this picture of confidence, you know, especially in front of the clients, but I had a pretty good feeling inside it was gonna go off without a hitch. And, you know, um, it's funny that every time I'm in the decoy setting up, there's always a few mallards that try to get in 15 minutes before legal light, always. And, you know, with the trailer still 20, 30 yards from the pond, me standing right in the decoys, their approach to that spot was perfect. And they literally land 10, 10 yards from my feet or try get into the hole that I'd set up in the decoys and they can't even see it. That tells me that the wind was perfect. And when I see that, I just go, boy, <laughs> they're in trouble. <laughs>